here, if we have just keep watching the termite mound, hopefully, there we go. Our consulting detective, while we look at our smallest mongoose species in the form of a dwarf mongoose dashing up and sends are doing an amazing job here. You want to know what other mongoose species we see regularly? Banded mongoose, oh I have to tell you such a funny banded mongoose story, remind me to come back to that. Banded mongoose, which are also social mongoose, but a lot larger than the little dwarf mongoose. And then we get the white-tailed mongoose, which is nocturnal. Oh look at that! squeezing its head up in between. The banded mongoose, the slender mongoose, which is a sing which is a solitary diurnal mongoose, a bit larger than these guys, reddish in color with a black tip to a long tail, and we hardly ever get to put on camera because they're quite shy. And then very possibly a water mongoose. Now I don't know if any of you have ever seen a water mongoose on the live drives. I haven't seen one yet, but I have seen the tracks for one around Sydney's dam, so they are around. And I know apparently you used to see otters as well, so I imagine that before the drought and the drying up of the water sources, I imagine that there was a possibility of seeing more water mongoose than we do now. Oh, they're cute. Aren't they sweet? Right, so banded mongoose, funny story. <laughs> Look at the little one. Look at that, they've got babies with them. Oh, sweet. Are you guys collecting all your little ones? This is my favorite thing to watch. That's what they're doing. They're dashing about trying to gather the little ones up, but the little ones just want to come out of the den site today. And every time they get one in, another one pops out. Very similar to these sightings that we've had around Treehouse Dam. There we go. Looks like you've got the job of babysitter. Oh, no. Oh, back up again. <laughs> Dashing about. They really are irresistible. Truly irresistible creatures. And you can see now they've got used to our presence. And they're much more relaxed and out in the open. So my banded mongoose story. We were, a friend of mine came to visit and she brought my dog for a visit as well while we were on leave. And Lexi, my dog, she's a Weimaraner, was dashing around the garden like a maniac. All of a sudden we heard this very funny and we looked across at our gate to our garden and there was a pair of banded mongoose that had just showed up. And the more we watched them, the more we realized that they were exceptionally, exceptionally habituated. And we started to, you start to think, no, this is a bit odd. Do they have rabies? Is there a problem? Then Lexi tried to, obviously being a Weimarana, go and explore exactly what they were. And the two of them promptly mobbed her. Now, a banded mongoose is bigger than a dwarf mongoose, but not much. And a Weimarana is quite a big dog. But suffice to say, by the end of it, Lexi was running in the opposite direction with her tail tucked between her legs. We then walked outside, and Brent sat down on the ground to see what these mongoose would do, and one of them shot straight up his leg into his shirt and cuddled up there. And so we had to start phoning around because it was getting dark, and we realized that these were not wild mongoose, these were pet mongoose. They were obviously habituated for some reason and they were clearly very, very used to people. So we popped them inside because, oh look here, sorry. Just have a look at these dwarf mongoose off to our left. There's, oh, they've gone again. There's more, there's more babies off to our left as well. Anyway, to cut a long story short, Brent fell in love with a banded mongoose once again and was very reluctant to let it go, even though as much as we talk about the fact that you shouldn't have mongoose as pets, and I promise you they do bite, he obviously was feeling reminiscing on his childhood back to his childhood and Lord Montague. So he was cuddling up to the mongoose. We eventually found the people who had lost their pet banded mongoose and returned them to them. But it was a very strange, very surreal experience. Hello, baby. Let's have a look here. This one's very curious. Oh, oh. Okay, it's all right. It'll come back out again. It'll come back out. We'll just wait for it. There's a tiny little one that keeps wanting to come up and sniff our tires. I'll give you a second. Uh, Senza, I'll show you where to go when I see it again. 
It's just vanished for the moment. Marco, you want to know about the territory size of a dwarf mongoose. If I remember correctly, here it comes, here it comes. Very, very slowly. Slowly, slowly. There we go. There's the curious little one coming out. Well done, Senzo. Um, if I remember correctly, it's around about 10 hectares. Obviously, that will depend upon the, the concentration of dwarf mongoose in an area, the amount of resource availability. If there's less resources, then their territories will be bigger. If there's lots of resources around in terms of insect life, then their territories will be a bit smaller. And gone. Oh, little one, but you got so brave there. I've sat before in complete silence and actually had them come right up to the vehicle and sniff. They're very curious creatures, even completely wild ones.